Tina Cooks is made possible through the generous support of G's Hot Dog Cafe, home of the Chicago Dog, Papa John's Pizza, Lemonster, Fitchburg, Marlboro, Worcester, KC's Body Connection Massage Center, connecting body, mind, and spirit, Boucher Construction, Central Mass Sand and Gravel. Hi, welcome to Tina Cooks. I'm in the time machine because tonight we're going to take a trip through the past. With the holidays coming, I've gotten a lot of requests for turkey, stuffing, and pasadella soup. So we've taken the shows and we've put them all together for you. So stay tuned for our Thanksgiving feast. Okay, today we're going to start with a basic chicken broth. This is, <laughs> I got a whole chicken in the water. I'm going to put in some fresh celery, some carrots. I'm leaving everything big because I want to either be able to strain this and indefinitely degrease it. What I do is I chill it, all the fat comes to the top and that's how you get a nice fat free broth. I'm going to leave these garlics hole too. I got a bang. I'm just going to crack them a little bit so that we can get what we need out of them. Okay. I'm going to throw in, usually I like the whole bay leaves, but I have this, so I'm going to try this. And where I'm straining the broth, it doesn't matter. I'm going to put some bay leaves in there, some nice fresh pepper. I'm not going to over season this either. I'm not going to use a lot of salt. There's about 10 quarts of water in here and whole chicken. I like to use this base when I make my pasadella soup or what people would call the wedding soup with the little meatballs and the scarola and the eggs. We're going to show you that one today too. We're going to put this on this back burner because this, this broth is going to have to cook at least two, three hours. It's going to have to come to a boil. You always start, when you start a broth like this, you start with nice cold water. You don't want to start with hot water. This is the meatball mix for my pasadella soup. Now if you've seen the meatball show, it's the same recipe for meatballs. The only thing I do not add in here are onions because these meatballs are done small. And unless your on onions are practically pureed, you don't want them in there. All right, this broth has been cooking two, three hours. Okay, I'm gonna take the cover off. Now this is our whole chicken, and we're gonna try to scoop him up in one piece. That's why I'm using a colander, because when a chicken's cooked two, three hours, man, they fall apart, you don't even realize how fast. I'm gonna slide this right into the dish there. And then we're gonna take our vegetables out. And I'm going to put over this pot, and I'm going to take this broth. Now the reason why I'm doing this, when I make a pasadella soup, I like to start out with just a basic broth. I'm going to bring this heat up, because what I have to do is I have to cook my meatballs first. It's a process. You know, you get your meatballs ready and you cook your meatballs first. Then when your meatballs are done, you add your rice. And then when your rice is done, you add your vegetables and you stir in your chicken. And then you add your eggs with your Romano cheese. It's, it's, a, it's a process. It's not a difficult soup once you have the broth made. I'm going to cover this up. And I'm going to let this come to a boil. So we have to bring this to a boil and put our meatballs in here. OK? All righty. OK, now our chicken broth 
is at a boil, okay, as you can see. Now I'm not going to worry too much if I don't use all of these meatballs because they're not cooked, they haven't been frozen. So whatever I don't use, I'm going to put into a little container because I can always make another soup later. I still have chicken broth and even though that looks like a little bit of meatballs, it's still going to flavor up another soup. Okay, cover this up. Now at this point, I'm going to take some of the carrots and I'm going to mash them. Now I don't want this soup heavy, heavy, heavy with carrots and celery and onions because I'm going to have the meatballs and the scadala and the rice that I'm going to add in here. So I am going to um, take this off for a minute. And I am going to add my carrots in. And I am going to break up some chicken. Now I'm going to let this simmer about 10 minutes or so. And then I'm going to add in a third of a cup of rice and scadala. And we'll be back for that. Okay, now you can see how this is boiling. Okay, nice, nice boil. I'm not going to leave it like this. I'm going to stir it. You can see the meatballs are starting to cook. You can smell the meatballs in there. I'm going to throw about a third of a cup of rice. And this is the scadala that I showed you we were blanching before. It's almost done exactly like the spinach. The only thing is, is you want to wring it out because you don't want all this water in your soup. And you do want to cut it up because it will stay stringy. It doesn't, it's not a mushy vegetable. It's not going to mush out. Now I'm going to stir it because I'm, I don't know, see, you can see the meatballs come to the top when you do that because I've added something cold. Now the rice is going to have to simmer 10, maybe 15 minutes or so. I'm not going to leave it on a hard boil anymore. I'm going to take the soup down to a simmer and I'm going to let it go about 15, 20 minutes. Then I'm going to check the rice and the taste of the broth and then we'll add our eggs and cheese. We'll be back. All right, now this soup is up to boil, okay? I shut, I shut this down just a tish. Our rice is all nice and ready in there. The skadal is in there. The chicken's in there. Everything's in there we need. Now I'm going to beat about six eggs and about three quarters of a cup, half a cup of Romano cheese. We're going to pour this right in here like this, okay? Don't stir it. Don't mush it around. You cover it up. You're going to let it simmer. The eggs are going to float to the top like little pillows. And we'll show you the final product when we serve it up. This is our pasadella soup we made. It's got rice and meatballs and chickens and scarola. It's a great holiday soup. There we go. Put a little bit of cheese in there. Doesn't get much better than that, pasadella soup. We're going to start by taking the turkey out of the bag. I haven't really bought a specific kind of turkey. Anything on sale is okay for me. And this is something I always do. We don't need that. That's an unnecessary thing. I usually do my turkeys about 20 minutes a pound. This is the fun part of a turkey. They truss it up like I don't know what. Getting these little plastic doohickeys out of here. and Now you want to rinse out your turkey real good because there could be blood in there and you know stuff. You don't want that in your salt water. We're going to salt it, almost brine it. Okay? Rinse out the neck. Um, I like to brine any fowl, turkey, chicken, duck, any, any type of fowl. By that I mean I use a high concentration of salt. It makes the skin nice and crispy. I don't know why I haven't actually figured out the science of it, but that's what I like to do. I'm going to grab my tray of ice because I also like to keep it on ice to keep it nice and cold. Here we go. 
Now I'm going to fill the sink with water so that the turkey is covered. And I'm going to let it sit there a good two, three hours. Alrighty, so this has been soaking a while. I took the gizzards, the stomach, the heart, and the neck, and I put it in the water to soak with the turkey. Now when I do a turkey, roasted turkey, I cover it completely in tin foil. Now you want to rinse this. Okay, and we're going to tuck his little arms back here. Alrighty. Just bend them and uh, tuck them back here like that. Kind of like arms behind, behind your neck there. <laughs> that one doesn't want to stay. <laughs> Alrighty. Make sure we get all the water out. Okay, come on, buddy. Put them in there. That little wing don't want to stay back there, so. All right, yeah, there we go. I'm going to take the neck, and I'm going to put it here. I'm not going to put these in there. Well, yeah, maybe I will. There's only two. When I used to make a giblet gravy, we used to boil the uh, gizzards separately. But I'm going to cook them with the turkey today. I am going to um, truss up the legs. Let me just grab my string. There we go, beautiful. I do pat the skin dry, okay, yeah, I deck it out with olive oil and rub it all over there, okay, now, this is a 16, 16 and a half pound turkey, I usually go 20, 25 minutes a pound. I'm gonna roast this, I've made my decision, six hours, almost seven. I do use granulated garlic, and I use a lot of it. Because I want, I want the juice that comes out of this turkey to be really seasoned, because we're gonna make our gravy with it. I'm gonna use pepper. All right, this is a huge box of salt. Salt it. Okay, so I got my gar granulated garlic, pepper, salt, and a little bit of parsley. I don't use poultry seasoning. I'm not a poultry seasoning person. I like my turkey to taste just like turkey. And I am going to put it with, with, with butter, naturally. Okay, now we're going to totally close this up. You want to do it systematically because you want to be able to open it with ease because the last hour or so, 45 minutes of baking, is going to be to crisp up the skin and brown it off. And at that time, we're gonna drain most of the um, juice out so that we can start a gravy. The oven is set at 350. I don't like to rush it, I'm not a, that's why I take my time, we're gonna cook it six, six, seven hours. Alrighty, so here we go. Turkey's going in. Okay, we're going to chop some onions, chop some garlic, we're going to put some olive oil in the pan. Now this is a meat stuffing that I grew up with. Um, I like bread stuffings but with chestnuts and you know I like to do it up. I'm not really a bread stuffing person because we've always used meat stuffing. I got about a half an onion which is like a half a cup, a couple of cloves of garlic, a couple tablespoons of oil. I've got almost three pounds of meat here. Now, if you look, when my mother used to make her stuffing, I've got ground pork and ground hamburg. We've always done it that way. That's how I was taught to do it. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna season it with granulated garlic, pepper, salt, parsley. We're going to cook this off so that all the red from the pork and the hamburger is gone. And then we're going to cool it down. Alright, now I'm, the hamburger and the pork is nice and cool. Okay. Now I used about three pounds of meat. 
So I like to use an egg per pound. So there's three eggs here, okay? There is a quarter of a cup of chopped pepperoni. I love to have pepperoni in my stuffing. There's about a cup of chopped mozzarella. I like it chunky. I buy the real block, okay? Because I like it to, as the stuffing's cooked, it just melts in a little, little ball there. It's really good. Uh, I'm going to add some salt. Had to get rid of the box. It was too awkward. A little salt. All right. I'm going to add a little bit of granulated garlic. Okay. And I'm going to add some pepper, black pepper. I would add a good two tablespoons of salt. I would start with about a half a teaspoon of pepper and a good tablespoon of the granulated garlic. The parsley, I, get, I probably use two tablespoons. So that's gonna give it some color, all right? Now I do wanna measure, so I'm going to measure. I'm gonna use about a cup, mm, cup and a half, what the heck? Cup and a half of Romano cheese. And I'm gonna use two cups of breadcrumbs, I think. See, I gotta look, because <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm gonna use a cup and a half for now. This is a cup of milk. I'm not sure how much I'm gonna use. So we'll start out with that. We'll see what happens, and then I'll tell you how much I used. This stuffing is also great in peppers. It's great in uh, tomatoes. It's great in chicken. I'm gonna add a little more milk. Not much. So I used three quarters of a cup of milk. Sometimes I don't use it all and I'll cut it into squares because if I have this left over, I cut it into squares and freeze it. It's a great meatloaf. It really is. Let's push this down. I might be able to fit it all in one. I usually put this in the oven about an hour before I'm ready to serve the turkey because everything in here is cooked. You just want to heat it through to get the eggs and the cheese melted and cooked. What I will do is when it starts to cook, sometimes I will just poke little holes in it and put some of the turkey broth from the turkey when I make the gravy. I'll add it to the stuffing so that it has that flavor in there. All right, this is gonna go into a 350 degree oven for about 45 minutes to an hour. And I am gonna literally take this turkey right out of the oven. We're gonna check to see how it's doing. Okay, oh yeah, we got a lot of nice juice in here. It's browning actually quite nice. All right, I'm gonna get my um, ladle here because what I wanna do at this point, all right, let me see if I can, I'm gonna take this turkey juice out because I kinda wanna start my gravy in a sense where I wanna separate the fat from the juice. I wanna make a roux. I'm also gonna start basting the turkey and getting it a little brown. Where I'm stealing all the turkey juice though, you're probably wondering, what is she gonna baste the turkey with? Over here I have a little bit of chicken broth and water, a couple of cups of water. I'm gonna pour this into the turkey pan and I'll tell you why. Because I wanna baste the turkey with this. It'll pick up the flavor of the turkey and it will add to the gravy. I'm gonna start the gravy, I'm gonna make it a little bit thick so that when we start with the gravy, when we start making the gravy and we're ready to do the gravy, we'll have a little extra juice if it's thick. I am gonna take this and crump it up, crump it up. I don't wanna damage the foil at this time because the turkey, actually, you know, I'm just gonna put it back in because it is only 
and I do have a couple of hours, so I don't want it exposed yet. So I kind of changed my mind. You can do that <laughs> as you're working. I changed my mind a lot. Okay, we're going to pop this back in. Okay, I'm going to start my gravy. And yes, I do use the turkey fat. I do use it. It makes a great gravy. I usually skim it off the top, like so. I'm doing a basic roux. A roux is equal parts of flour and fat. Now I've got about maybe half a cup, three quarters of a cup of um, turkey fat in there. So I'm going to put in one, two, three heaping. And I'm going to mix it up. I can tell by the texture of my roux if it's thick enough or not for me. Okay? Alrighty. Now this is for a dark gravy, so I am going to cook it. If you're making a um, white gravy, a cheese sauce, or you don't want to actually cook your flour too, too much because then it, it, it darkens your sauce. Alrighty, this is about the consistency I like to see in the bottom right now. Okay. Now to this roll, I'm going to season it because the flour doesn't really taste like much. So I am going to put about, I would say that's about a teaspoon of salt to start. I always start with a little bit of pepper because you can always add more pepper. That's about a quarter of a teaspoon, half a teaspoon. Once you add too much pepper, it's hot. It's, it's just hot for the rest of the time. And I'm going to put in about a teaspoon of garlic. Okay. I don't know what's wrong with this burner. I just don't want to kick up. Now this is cooking, and I'm going to let it cook. It needs to cook. You need to cook out the flour. And the, um, you can see how it's turning like a little white, because the flour is actually cooked. The, the pastiness of the flour is actually cooking out. Alrighty, we're going to add this now because it's starting to, you can see that it's changing, it's changing a little bit. Now a lot of people, what they do is they add a cup at a time, a little bit at a time, this at a time. I kind of go like this. You can hear it sizzling, okay? And there we go. Now this looks like it's going to be really, really thin, but it's not. It's going to be really, really thick. Now you have to whisk at this point, and it's a really, really light gravy because it's a light broth. I add um, Gravy Master and, 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 um, to, to make it a little darker, but I am going to bring this down because I don't want this boiling really, really, really hard because I just right now I want it at a nice low simmer. I'm going to cover it up a little bit, and I'm just going to let it go. Now when I used to work at King's Corner when we made turkey gravy, we would literally take the gizzards, the stomach and the heart, and we would boil them, grind it up, and then we'd cook them with onions, um, really, really, really fine, and that's how we would start our gravy, was with the gizzards and the onions, and um, we would do it from there. I don't put the gizzards in, I don't, I'm not into that uh, meat anymore. I'm going to let this simmer. All right, so we're back. We have our stuffing, our turkey, our gravy, and our sides. Well, that's our Thanksgiving show. Have a happy Thanksgiving, and thank you for watching Tina Cooks.